Good evening. A U.S. soldier is behind bars tonight for plotting a massive attack on troops at a sprawling army base in Texas. Police tell ABC News the suspect is 21-year-old Private Nasser Abdo, a Muslim raised in Texas, already facing court-martial. His plan reportedly included multiple bombs and a shooting rampage near Fort Hood, the site of that massacre two years ago. And it was all thwarted by a retired cop who worked in a gun shop. ABC's Ryan Owens is inside that gun shop in Colleen, Texas tonight. Ryan. Good evening to you, Diane. Police believe the attack was actually supposed to happen today. As you said, it was thwarted when this young soldier came all the way here to Texas. He was based 800 miles away in Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and stopped at this gun store. The clerk here had a feeling he might be up to no good. Investigators say this young soldier has been battling the Army almost since he joined it. I don't want to deploy because I believe uh, I can't both deploy and be a Muslim. 21-year-old Nasser Abdo didn't want to fight in Afghanistan, but sources say he was more than willing to cause bloodshed at home. After being arrested, he told officers he wanted to get even with the military and chose Fort Hood because of the 2009 attack here, where Major Nadal Hassan allegedly killed 13 and wounded 30. He told them he wasn't going to target the military post, but a nearby restaurant popular with soldiers. He told them his plan was to set off two bombs, then shoot any survivors. Police say the attack was imminent. We would probably be here today giving you a different briefing had uh, he not been stopped. When the magazine is loaded, it's... Greg Ebert is the man who stopped him, a former Marine and police officer who works at this Colleen gun store. He got suspicious when Abdu arrived in a cab on Tuesday, then bought six pounds of gunpowder, three boxes of shotgun ammunition, and a magazine for a semi-automatic pistol. He paid $250 in cash. If somebody comes in, especially into a business like this, and makes a purchase and doesn't know what he's buying, I'd be concerned about that and was. I'm not bashful at all to point a finger and say, there's something wrong with this guy. Concerned enough to call police. I thought he was a, a little bit aloof. Who the next day searched the soldier's room at this local hotel. I'm only pleased that uh, an imbalanced individual is not out where he can do harm to the public. Inside that soldier's hotel room, they not only found the ammunition he purchased here, but a pistol as well as the components needed to make two bombs. Diane. Ryan, talk about see something, say something. That was in force. Thank you. And I want to bring in now our senior Justice Department correspondent, Pierre Thomas. I know you've been working the story all day. Any evidence of a wider plot? Anybody else involved? Dying so far, there's no evidence of a wider plot. Police are dissecting his life, but they want to know more details so they continue to work tonight. This appears to be a classic lone wolf case. Uh, we're told that Nasser had been under investigation for months after he allegedly was overheard making radical statements. Military officials started looking at his background and eventually came across child pornography on his computer. Nasser, facing those charges in a court martial, disappeared on the 4th of July. In addition to the explosives in that hotel, police discovered jihadist literature. As the investigation continues tonight, Diane, the FBI wants to know, did Nasser become a ticking time bomb on his own, or did someone encourage him? Nasser was known to mention the name of radical cleric Anwar al-Awlaki, who is currently hiding in Yemen, but police have established no firm ties. No firm ties. Did he have materials from al well, again, our information is that he was known to throw around the name, and that's one of the reasons why officials became concerned about it. 